I have sunk to new lows, both literally and figuratively. I'm sitting on the floor now. I don't even have my sawhorse. This piece of plywood is on two buckets. Uh, but that doesn't really matter because by my count, this log is 25 days late, so just keeping that bar low. So just a crick, crick, a crick. Go for a swim in the crick. Creek. Quick. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. So just a quick recap of things that have been going on in the last two months now. I moved a whole bunch of lumber. We have a ton of cedar that was part of a project that Ben was doing, and we moved it from the tiny house to this house. And when I say we, I'm being very generous because I moved it. I did. For one of Ben's projects, he wanted specific dimensions, so we took the 12 foot long 2x6s and we milled those down. I did put out a video. It is a shelf that is specifically designed for my bathroom needs. For laundry needs in the bathroom, to be more specific. I also went to the second annual Workbench Con. As much fun as Workbench Con was, I have to say the highlight of these last two months is having Ellen from Crafts with Ellen come visit. So while she was here, we got to do some filming, so you should expect that two more Fool Fly videos are coming your way. I took advantage of the opportunity of having Ellen here to make her sit down and answer some questions, so those will also be coming up a bit later in the video. Now to do a bit of a deep dive. I don't think I need to tell you any more about using the table saw with Ben or moving lumber around because I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you have more questions about that, go ahead and rewind this video and watch those clips again. Yeah. <clears throat> so the shelf. I can't actually remember what I said in the video so I'll just say it again or for the first time. I share a bathroom. Not only do I share a bathroom, I share a bathroom with Dingus. This bathroom doesn't have a lot of open space. It does have floor to ceiling cupboards, which are actually a terrible idea in a bathroom because for some reason the doors seem to impede people from opening them and putting things inside the cupboard. So they end up on the floor. I'm pretty pleased with this project because it not only went together, it went together 83% well. I'll have to think about that sentence for a minute. Not only did that shelf go together without any hardware, but the pieces fit together well enough that it almost didn't even need glue. There was just one area at the very top where there wasn't a lot of... it didn't quite meet together. So I decided to glue it together, and I decided that if I was going to glue that one place, then it'd be silly not to glue it all over. The reason why I like this project so much is it's proof of concept. So you can do simple joinery without fancy tools. And yes, I am calling a chisel and a hand plane fancy because in my head that means precision, and precision comes with knowledge, and knowledge comes with being fancy. I'm not sure how that all works, but in my head it does. This was kind of an exercise for me in showing myself that I could do something that I liked. I like the way it fit together. I like puzzles. I'm a big jigsaw puzzle fan. Um, so this was very satisfying, especially that I had to hit it together with a mallet, and I only hit my thumb once. And so I was really pleased with that outcome. The hampers were another story. If you're going to try a sewing all out for the first time, I recommend that you draw yourself a line to follow. Those were the most ridiculous seams I have ever sewn. Workbench con. Okay, so this was a really cool event. Uh, I went last year to the first one. This year it was about twice as big 
but it still wasn't that big. It was still small enough where I feel like we all got a chance to hang out and meet each other for the second time and also meet new people. Oh, okay. Oh, Lord. Hi. Oh, my gosh. Hi, I'm very confident. Don't be nervous. Is this right? Is this how you hold a baby? Uh, no, how to be so. Well, I don't know. <laughs> wow, it's so great to meet you, Sunny. How are you doing, man? Welcome to, the, to, to our world. Going to events like WorkbenchCon can be really great because not only do you get to attend classes and talk to the people who have been doing whatever it is you want to do, the biggest part of it is just getting all together and meeting each other and finding new ways to collaborate, if that's your thing, or learning new techniques. Oh! I kind of cheated. You hit my leg. Did you really? Yeah. Or just realizing that for the majority of us, we spend a lot of time alone, and we don't really know how to socialize. So when we all get together, it's pretty great. We can all be dorks together. I have to say though that out of all the things I saw and all the people I met, one of my favorite moments was introducing Chops with Chris to my new friends Mary and Ashley, and watching the look of surprise on their face when he talked to them about mascara wands. Yeah, you heard me. So this is the part of the video where I tell you about someone who I think is pretty cool. This is Lucy. Lucy's pretty cool. And not just because she has made excellent choices in her footwear. Now this is the first time that I have told you about someone who I think is pretty cool and I have not met them yet. I do hope to meet her someday because Lucy and I have become friends over Instagram and she's pretty awesome. Also, she has a big ginger cat, so we're basically best friends now. Lucy has just gone into business for herself. She makes scrunchies. They're called Love Knots by Lucy, and they're pretty rad. They come in a lot of different colors, and I didn't buy the first round because I was waiting for my colors. So. If you have hair, I suggest that you get a set of Love Knots by Lucy. Not only do they come in a lot of different colors, but they come in three packs. So you can wear them yourself or share them with your friends. What's not to love? So go check her out. Lucy's pretty cool. In other news, I got a coffee sponsor. <laughs> I am so happy about that because I drink a lot of coffee. And this came about in kind of a cool way. So I got a message on Instagram from my brother and it was this photo. And I fell in love with this mug. So I reached out to them, they're called Caffeinated Coffee Company, and I said, I love your mug, and I would love for you to sponsor me. And they said, sure. How great is that? So not only did they send me every coffee that they make, except for decaf, because reasons. They also sent me this mug and another one that you'll see a bit later. Cool thing about them is, I wanted them for the mug, and then I tried the coffee, and the coffee is good. It's important that you know that they're not paying me. I don't get paid for this. So if I didn't like the coffee, I could have said, you know, that's cool, thanks, but, but I did. It's not like the really weird hipster coffee that tastes really sour and everyone says it's so good. I drink my coffee black, so it's very important that it actually tastes good. So. As part of our deal, Caffeinated Coffee Company has given me a discount code, so if any of you lovely people would like to purchase coffee or mugs or coffee to put in mugs, then you can go to their website and use the discount code JESSE to get 50% off with a $20 minimum purchase. And that's good through April 30th of 2019. Just a tiny bit of backstory before I keep charging ahead. 
So the idea behind Caffeinated Coffee Company is that they buy their beans directly from women farmers. So what they're seeing is that women were being underpaid and undervalued and overworked. So instead of going through a middleman, they go directly to the women farmers in Central America, South America, and Africa. They bring the coffee back to Berkeley and they roast it there themselves. It's a good company, it's a good cause, it's a good coffee, and as I've said, I really like this mug, so... Cheers! Also, can we talk a minute about the shape of this handle? Look at that. My hand fits this handle. I like this mug a lot. It's cold now, but it's still good. And now, let's talk about Ellen. Ellen. So you already know Ellen is one of my favorite people. I met her when I was in the UK last year at Maker Central. And she is, she's an amazing seamstress. But there's also not anything she can't do, as I discovered in depth while she was here where I watched her angle grind for the first time, I watched her weld for the first time, I watched her use a random orbit sander for the first time. It was fantastic. These things that I have just been trying for the first time, I now got to share with someone else and that is an indescribable feeling. So while she was here, Ellen did what she does and she cranked out a build. The build in this case was sewing a dress. She made River's Dress from Firefly, Episode 5, Safe. If you've seen it, you know. If you haven't, you will now. I know, I know. It's me wearing a pink dress and my hair is all did. It's not that I don't know how to girl, I just don't do it often. So while Ellen was here, ugh. While Ellen. So while Ellen was here, we both got to shoot intros for our Fool Fly videos. I have not actually built it yet, but I have the intro, so it's something. It's enough. <laughs> now we're going to take a little jump back in time for the interview with Ellen. In my first vlog, I told you about someone who I thought was pretty cool, and that person is Ellen. Ellen is here right now. This is Ellen. Hi. So, Ellen, I'd like you to introduce yourself and uh, give me as much history about yourself as you can in 15 seconds. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one. Wait. No. Yeah. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ellen. Uh, I have a YouTube channel called Crafts with Ellen. I make things, I sew a lot of things, I knit, I crochet, I cross stitch, I welded for the first time today. Um, I from the Netherlands, I live in Denmark. Okay, stop talking. Time's up. Well, that was lovely. Now, on to the questions. No, it wasn't a question. No. <laughs> okay. How do you define what you do? I figure out how I can make things. So it's not so much about the thing I make, but learning how I can make the thing. I like that. That's good. Okay. Why do you make videos? Because I learned a lot from other people's videos. And there aren't a lot of sewing channels in this community, so I might as well share what I do. Excellent. What is your unfair advantage? Ooh. No way. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 What interviewers do. This is how you know I'm paying attention. This is how you know you're a professional. Yes. Yes. Okay. I don't even wear glasses. <laughs> My unfair advantage. Yes. I studied industrial design. 
meaning yeah. that I learned about uh, styles and design and production techniques. Never actually did them, but I learned about them. <laughs> um, and graphic design and how to edit videos. I had a little bit of all of that in my degree. Uh, if this were a real interview, that would be really interesting to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad, we have to stick to your list. <laughs> yes. All right. So you've been here like 10 days or so. Um, one thing that I noticed is that when you make a peanut butter sandwich, you cut it in half, but not diagonally, which mm -hmm. is clearly just, I mean, it ruins the flavor profile. So um, what other ways are you really weird? Sometimes I just fold my sandwich, I don't cut it. Move on from that one. <laughs> How do you recalibrate when you're working on a project and just everything just goes to hell? So every project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I step away and usually I'll go for a walk. Mm -hmm. So if you just get outside in a different space and not keep staring at the thing that's wrong on so many levels, just go for a walk, get some movement and some fresh air and come back to it. What makes you so special? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Anything I do, anyone can do. Okay. Excellent. What do you want to see in the community? I don't know. <laughs> also fair. I want to see everyone try everything, so not just their own thing that they've been doing for 10 years, but I want to see welders use a sewing machine, and I want to see woodworkers do engraving, and I want to see people just having fun trying new things and explore. What do you get out of this whole community at large, but also not just the making of things, but the making of the videos of the thing that you are making. Mm -hmm. What I get out of it is a lot of motivation. So I make the videos because it gives me a reason to make something, because making relaxes me, but if I don't have a reason to do it, I'll just keep stressing out about everything else and not take the time to just sit down and spend a day or two just making something. So the video is just an, an excuse for me <laughs> to do the thing I like to do. Um, and the, the feedback is great. Having everyone be excited and, and interested and just saying they learned something. Yeah, that's really motivating. Cool. Uh, what advice do you have for professionals? Don't listen to me. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> And uh, what do you want to say? I want to say you, everyone, <laughs> you uh, have more control and more power than you think. And it's easy to think you live in a world that is the way it is and you have to adapt to it. But you can make the world adapt to you by making your own things and by rediscovering skills that people lost and seeing that okay you know i don't have to um buy this mass-produced object that doesn't really fit me like clothing sizes are terrible um mm -hmm. you you can make your own and that that's a very powerful feeling indeed it is how many times have you eaten potatoes <laughs> what are you bad at What do you want from it? Well, that was it. It was relatively painless. Cheers. Relatively. Cheers. So those were the questions I had for Ellen. If you want to hear all the answers, you can't, unless you become one of my patrons. So I do have a Patreon, and my plan is that I will do interviews and ask around 10 questions, and I'll put seven or so of them in the vlog and the rest of them you have to be a patron to see. So go do that.
a big thank you to everyone who is a patron of mine already. I am... I'm overwhelmed. Your support and your counsel has been greatly appreciated. I've got a lot of traveling coming up in the next couple months, so I don't know how much building I'll be able to do, but if you want to hang out, that could be possible. I'm going to be in the Bay Area, in Oakland to be exact. On April 5th, I'm giving a talk at Mills College. Um, my talk is based around being me, so, you know, you might learn something if you are wanting to be a small Asian-ish girl. It is free and it's open to the public, so check that out. If you're in the area, come by, say hi. I'd love to see you. Probably, unless you suck. In that case, stay home. Whatever. And then, of course, in May, on the 11th and 12th, I think, I'll be in Birmingham, UK at Maker Central. Again, come by, say hi. Uh, ben and I are giving a talk there. I'm also part of the Make With Makers crew, which basically means that a few of us have banded together and are going to give some classes. I'm not teaching anything, so don't worry about that. But Ellen will be teaching sewing, thanks to Janome UK for donating six sewing machines for us to use. And the Redsmith will be doing a leather working tutorial. Now, we're having some trouble finding a leather company that will help us out, which is odd because there's a big leather company that is exhibiting there, but they don't seem to be wanting to be helpful. So if you or someone you know has any leather working tools or leather that you want to donate or lend, let me know. You can put it in the comments or send me an email, find me on Instagram, uh, let me know. It'd be nice if we could get him all the tools so that he can teach all the people. Okay, that's it. That's all I got. I now have to drive for 17 hours, so I'm gonna go. I'll be on the road a lot in the next month or two, or seven. So if you have any recommendations of things I should see, places I should go, I'll be all across the United States. Leave them down in the comments. Uh, if you want to know what I'm doing on a semi-daily basis, I will be probably telling you all about it on Instagram. So you should go follow me there. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the verse. He's not even in the living room. He's just letting the camera talk or something. I don't know. It's a home security system. He's in his room. And it's in the living room. And it's talking. Does anyone want a brother? I will give him away for cheap. It's just like the story of the grasshopper and the octopus. All year long, the grasshopper was burying acorns for winter, and the octopus mooched off his girlfriend and watched TV. Then the winter came, and the grasshopper died, and the octopus ate all his acorns, and he also got a race car. Is any of this getting through to you? Ugh, I give up.